Are we rolling? Yeah. Ah, cool. Well, we're here in Ubud, Bali's Mecca, home of, I don't know, yoga, hot chicks, smoothie bowls. And we are here today to go and speak with a local legend who's introduced to me as the unofficial mayor of Ubud. Probably the happiest person I've ever met. Yes. Probably the youngest looking, nearly 60 years old. Really? Yeah. Tantra teacher Shiva Rajaya. And we're going to kind of learn a bit about his journey, how he's ended up in this temple out here and learn some of his tantric secrets. Man, it's so pretty out here. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. Man, look at these statues. Welcome to the temple. Shiva? <laughs> hey, welcome! <laughs> Dude, amazing. Good to see you again. <laughs> <That's super. laughs> Jaya! Jaya! I love what you've done with the place. Yeah, yeah. It's changed a lot. It's been like four years since you've been here. Six? Six years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Before I remember you had kind of like, I don't know, it was a Sanskrit, but you had all of the symbology, yeah, the writing. Yeah, still, still over there. Around. Just moved around yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's completely different than what I was here. Yeah. Uh, this is new, isn't it? I don't remember. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah, yeah. I had two rooms over there, and then we opened the space, and uh, more spaciousness. What yeah. does this mean down here? It's a set of mantras to activate, uh, yeah, good vibes for the floor, right? So that's why <laughs> when I walk on it, I'm like, Oh my God, instead of the floor is lava, it's like, the floor is gold. <laughs> you know, my nephews do the floor is lava huh? thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Should, should we grab a seat? Mm -hmm. I was cutting some coconuts. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cutting coconuts over here, come on. This is new, I don't remember this but Yeah, exactly, all that is a new area. Garden temple now. Yeah. You're holding men's groups here on yeah, men's Tuesdays groups. and then the Shiva circle on Thursdays? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Do you climb and get those coconuts yourself? <laughs> Would you climb that? Uh, <laughs> you're asking the wrong person because the last time Matt was here, he was learning how to climb these trees. Yeah. Well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's really full on, man. This guy, he wakes up at uh, 5 a.m., goes and climbs. Wow. Wow. Every day? Uh, not every day, but like when he does, he's, he's going to do like, uh, yeah, probably a dozen trees, you know, up and down. Yeah, yeah. Try it out. Try one, man. It's yeah. Like, they do the thing where they like rope in through the feet and then they can like go yeah, up. Yeah. yeah. But without, without any, any protection or anything. I think they just put a, a little thing here yeah, to yeah, hold the yeah, feet together. To the grip. Yeah, yeah. That's, what I, that's what they taught me. Yeah, cause I, <laughs> when Matt did it, I remember he came down, you, you worn clothes and your <laughs> top was just destroyed <laughs> yeah. from the back. Yeah. You were right. <laughs> His top was just completely destroyed from like, hugging the back for like 20 yeah, meters. Yeah, I was up. like grabbing on for dear life. Like, oh yeah. Sliding, yeah, I wasn't, oh. it's, it's hard to learn. Wow. Here we go. This is the nectar. Have you ever made coconut oil? No. I tried once, but it was difficult. Because you got to get the old coconut. Wow. I just bit. There's your <laughs> On an ant. Oh, yeah, I know. There's She's, uh, <laughs> she, she delivered some formic acid in my mouth. <laughs> just funny.
So is, this your, is this for your breakfast? Mm -hmm. I was going to make some juice. I didn't have time. Maybe we can check some of my nutrition if you like. Yeah. You want that? Yeah. David? Yeah. I remember we were, the last time I was here, I was asking you what one of the, uh, so what try, try the, this. Secret, the secret was. The to nectar, the morning nectar. This is like. <laughs> How old are you now? I was trying to guess the way. You must be 56? <laughs> 58. Wow. 58 now. You haven't yeah. aged a day in six years. Yeah, thank you. It's all this pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Think it's a raw diet? Mm. Probably 90%. Yeah. Yeah, vegan and, and mostly raw. Yeah. The, the raw thing is really challenging to make it work. Yeah. Yeah. I think for people. Yeah. Because you, you have to get enough calories in there. Yeah. You have to, f to find healthy source of sources of carbs. Yeah. You know, of complex carbs. You can get lots of fruits, you can get lots of vegetables, but something that gives you the really the, yeah. the consistency of the complex carbs. And How long was the transition for you? I've been playing with it for like 15 years. Yeah. We have been um, for a long time, maybe at 80%. And then started moving. And then, um, yeah, the the full vegan was eight years maybe. Before that was already like 90, 99%. There was still some eggs and some fish. Was it emotional like letting go of hot foods? Um, not really. Well, easier because of the climate. I think what, what, what was really the, the trick to find is to find substitutions, you know. Mm. Like for instance, this is my substitution for cheese. Yeah. Right, so you can mix that with salt and make all sorts of delicious recipes. Yeah. If you have coconut water, it's not milk, but yeah. it's like, you know, all the dairies go into replaced by the coconut. So it's a matter of finding the right substitutions. Yeah. Like for instance, um, going vegan, I started um, uh, sprouting a lot, like doing lots of sprouts. So this is for the protein, right? And then um, I brought in lots of spirulina. I have a kilo of fresh spirulina every week. Yeah. Of fresh spirulina. Wow. Right? It's not powder, it's the, the fresh one. And wow. this, is, this feels like it's the, all the algae, I have the feeling, out of the substitution for all the animal products. Yeah, I was going to ask, because a lot of people struggle with the vegan thing after like seven years, right? That they had that run down of those nutrients that they're not getting. Yeah. yeah. And there's things like the spirulina that's plugged the gap. I was told like, that uh, you know you have maybe you can sustain it for like one or two years and then you enter into deficiencies yeah and so, uh, not my experience at all no. it's like this is why i was trying because i go like if we are fucking up the planet because of animal agriculture right? yeah the question is um what can we do about it yeah and so for both the animals because of the cruelty and for the planet and for health reasons. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go full on and see if it's sustainable. Yeah. I'm going to use my body as an experiment. Yeah. And I'm like seven years now into the experiment and it's, it's fun, it's great. Yeah. yeah, I'm loving it. What do you think and about these diets where it's full carnivore? Like people often with these like autoimmune conditions haven't been able to shake it and then they just, just opted to eat nothing but steak every single day. Yeah. And uh. Seemingly, that seems impossible because you're not getting enough nutrients from one uh, food source. But it seems to work. And they I don't. I don't have enough uh, information or knowledge about it. Yeah. For me, I think that if you're in a place where the only thing that you can find is meat, yeah, then you know that's a logical choice. Yeah. But um, I don't believe that being that exclusive and that narrow is a is a good thing. Yeah. It's like at the end we are still omnivores. It means yeah. that we can we have the range and the possibility to eat lots of things. Yeah. And um, I'm not sure if you saw this documentary, the the blue zones. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah so yeah. over there, most of the things that are consistent is that most of these regions they have probably 80 percent. It's the of the base is either rice or carbs or potatoes or something like that. Yeah. And so if you have so many different cultures around the world which are doing something that works that brings them to be centenarians yeah you know a, a zone of centenarians together yeah. with having very healthy family dynamics yeah. moving their bodies and keep on being active and so on if that works for them you know they, this is the longest uh, tested yeah. experiment and um, for me the ones who are online promoting carnivore diet 
um, first they don't make sense to me at all. <laughs> the, the, the science behind it is really weird and, you know, it, uh, it's not very coherent. And then when I look at them, I don't see an example of lifestyle that I go like, yeah, great, um, you want to be a carnivore? Here's a knife, go and chop the head of this rabbit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and try it out, try it out without having the intermediary. Yeah. And um, yeah, so it's a, it's a long, it's a, it's a big topic. I'm not here to be dogmatic, yeah. like whatever, everybody does whatever they want. I think that the, the core to, um, to move to a more human world is to, uh, to have more options everywhere. It's like, I remember 20 years ago, if I was in the streets of Geneva and I wanted some vegan options, it was very hard to find. Yeah. That was a limiting factor. It yeah. is that you arrive anywhere in a restaurant and, and most options are just like meat and fish and eggs. And so all animal products based yeah. because this is what people are using the culture. Yeah. And even now you arrive sometimes to some restaurants, traditional restaurants, and you go like, there is no vegan, vegan options. So that's the thing I think that needs to evolve and needs yeah. to change yeah. uh, more than pushing everybody. and. Here is a. <laughs> here are pictures of slaughtered cows, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah. just look at them until you you vomit, and then you are going to change your diet. Yeah, I think that that works to a certain extent, but the core element is just yeah changing the culture. Yeah, slightly. Like for instance, over here in Ubud, we have like a dozen or more really healthy and powerful vegan restaurants. Yeah, and um, it's it's like. It's a no-brainer. Everybody, you know, half the people just go naturally go vegan because the options are there and it's delicious, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Also, yeah, I think there's no longevity test on the carnival stuff yet, right? There's no one that's 100 that's just been eating meat for 50 plus years. No, so exactly. it's impossible to say. But it's I'm glad it's you... A, it's anecdotic so far, you know? It's more like based on one person has an experience and then they say, well, it's working really well and I had pimples before and now I don't have pimples. You go like, okay, great. Good on you. And uh, does that mean that you have to go, uh, you know, carnivore only, meat only? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We are humans. Yeah. So the diversity of the human experience is, is really cool. Yeah. yeah. Means that everyone can make their own choices. You, um... You brought up Geneva there, which I'm glad you did, because not many people would think that Shiva in Shiva's temple in Ubud <laughs> would have started yeah. in, uh, in Geneva. I would love if you could share a little bit about, I know it's been a long journey, uh -huh. but how you kind of morphed from the West, from that like very, in some ways quite restricted society, very, very neutral, famously so, to living a life of like, massive vitality, massive love, service out here in Ubud. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How did that, uh, yeah. How did that happen? Because <laughs> you, you were like normally... You want to sit down? Yeah, yeah like, let's do it. Give you some uh, coconut water. Thanks. Now that we have it. Actually, I 